Good morning, everybody. It's Mark. Welcome back. Well, we're back out here. It's uh, it's February 7th or 6th, I forget. Got 43 degree water, about 40 degree air, and uh, a lot of fish on the graph. So we're in about 20 foot of water. And again, I mean, it's it's hard for me to get away from the jig bite when it works. But we're gonna treat this like a little tournament day. I got out here around noon, 12.30. I'm gonna fish until five. So yesterday I came out for about three hours. And uh, well here, these are the two fish I caught. Check them out. Got him. Oh yeah. Yes. That is a big bass. That is a toad. 211. Nice bass. Nice start. Wow. Big bait, big fish. 211. Got him. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. That's a good fish. Yeah. Oh man, 115 and a quarter, almost two pounds. So 211 and a 115 and a quarter. I mean, that ain't bad guys. A couple hours. We're gradually, as we go down this bank, it gets deeper. We're sitting kind of right on that shelf where it goes from 24 to 28. Up against the bank there, it goes from about six feet to 12 to 18 real quick. There are a lot of, obviously you can see there's a lot of cover right here against the bank. But what I'm trying to do is get it back in there and bring it through the strike zone, which is in about 10 feet to 20 feet. My target area, is up here in this little indent in the bank but i started back quite a bit further about 100 yards the key to that or the reason why is you don't want to barrel up to the spot you want to fish and just freak everybody out so you start back further and start working your way towards your target don't just pull up and start fishing the target Chances are you're gonna spook them. Speaking of spooks, check out this spook right here. If you guys don't have one of your inaugural tracker spooks in whatever color flavor you'd like, check out Shanka Lures on Facebook. They'll make whatever color you want. Got him. Look, I don't know what he's, oh boy, here we go. Oh, that's a nice fish, everybody. Oh, yeah. We're going to boat flip his ass. Yes, 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 yes. It's a good start. Settle down, feller. I'll get you. Settle, settle, settle. All right. Number one. We're going to weigh him up real quick. Okay, we're going to zero it. 111 and a half. Now we got a basically a little over a pound and a half for the first fish. Uh, we're doing good. We need four more bigger than that. And I think we're doing the right thing. 
I've literally been watching people come and fish this whole area out here. There's some marks on the fish finders that show brush piles and not one of them, not one I've seen fishes this side of the lake. They're all over there. And I catch fish right in front of them. It's funny. I... People have kind of forgotten to find their own little holes and just rely on the brush piles on the fish finders. And I think everybody and their brother comes out. I, when I got out here a little bit ago, there was a dude sitting right in the middle of the lake where there's a brush pile every day. Uh, that someone's out here anyway, I see that. And those areas get so much pressure that I don't even bother. So I guess the key is find areas in your lakes where you notice less pressure. I think you'll have better opportunities at getting fish. I got another spot down lake I'm gonna hit right after this. And then I'm gonna go into an area that I've done very well at and just check it out. The lake's super clear today even though we had a ton of wind last night. When I was out here yesterday, it was windy. And with the swim bait as the trailer on my finesse jig, a lot of times I'll cast it up, let it hit the bottom, and just ever so slowly drag it back to me. Uh, consistently though, with no pause. Sometimes they want to chase it, and sometimes they want to look at it and then attack it. It, uh, it all depends on the day, you know, and the water temperature does make a big deal. They're less likely to run after it when it's real cold. If it's sitting there in front of them, smash. We're going to get one right here, I have a feeling. Bounce it right off the rock there, right down the face. It's a good move if you can pull it off. It's you know, there's not a lot to get hung up on right here, but if you can get it onto the shore and then pop it back in the water, even better. Because then you're getting the full use of that space. There could be fish underneath that where the rock goes back under. If you see the rocks up above, they can't leave her out over what's beneath it. Same thing's happening right here. There could be fish in four feet of water underneath that rock. Just take advantage of those hiding spots. Got him on the Ned rig. Oh! Is that a smallmouth? Yeah! Nice smallie. All right, on the Ned rig. Oh, he's all wrapped up now. Child almighty. You got enough problems, brother. Look at that hook set, right in the top of his mouth. A little small mouth. He, he's probably less than a pound. One, three and a quarter. We don't have a lot of time. Little baby girl. Nice little small mouth. It's time to go. Well, that was fun. But at any rate, we had a couple nice fish there. And um, can't complain. It's 